Hey Gen Zers, this is Mackenzie Amix with today's Gen Z with Mackenzie, and today I'm joined by Bo Wang Trackledy, who is a PhD chemist, an entrepreneur, and the founder of Amor Suite, which is a lab apparel company for women. Welcome, Bo. Hi everyone. So, so glad to be here. Awesome. So can you tell us a little bit about the incident that you had with the chemical spill um, that kind of sparked your creative endeavors with the company? Yeah, so Mackenzie, um, I was a PhD chemist for many years. I work in the lab for close to 10 years, and my role was to, you know, discover uh, new drugs. So like, I make drugs and I test drugs to see it actually works against a disease. I work across oncology, malaria, and other things. So one of the day that I was conducting chemical experiment, I have an accident where I spill chemicals on myself. And at the time I was wearing the lab coat, I was dressed properly, but the chemical just burned through my lab coat, soaked through my pants and burned my legs. And when something like that happens to you, it kind of opened your eyes, you know, like what it was like when the, you know, your personal protective equipment, in this case, my lab coat did not protect you. It could potentially be between life and death. Um, and so I was motivated to look for other products in the market to protect myself in addition to a lab coat. And I just found that there were a gap, especially for sizes uh, for women or someone with smaller frame. And that motivated me to start Armacy. Absolutely. And that sounds like a really scary experience, especially since you were wearing your lab coat and it still wasn't um, protective enough. So tell us a little bit more about the company and how you guys create um, clothes for smaller people or females um, that can really protect them and enable them to do their job. Tell us a little bit more. Yeah, so in the beginning, it was just an idea um, that I found that there's this gap. So we actually did a little bit of talking to woman scientists. In the beginning, it was my friends and colleagues. It was mostly just like, you know, this happens to me and I have a really tough time finding the products for myself. Um, do you have the same experience? And many women would find, you know, that they either have an accident and then they would say something about it. They can't find the products, but they just kind of think that that's just the way things are. Um, so I ended up talking to over a hundred women scientists who saying the same thing. And when I asked, like, what would you really want to see in terms of the aesthetic of personal protective equipment, they would tell me that they want something that they could be able to transition from the bench to the boardroom. A lot of us as a woman scientist, we kind of play multiple roles. Um, we work in the lab, we go teach, you know, sometimes you go to a job interview or you present your work to the group. Um, so like, we want something that a little bit more classic professionals that can transition from the bench to to the boardroom and protective and comfortable at the same time. So that was an idea of how the feature of the product kind of came together. Absolutely. And it really goes a long way to show that they're like in terms of protective equipment, um, the standard is for men and male frames. And I think that's really important that you guys are kind of bringing, extending that because there are so many women that are scientists and who also need this. Um, I'm just surprised it hasn't um, presented itself as an issue prior to your company, but thank you guys for kind of pioneering that. So transitioning a little bit um, to talk about the products, your products are chemical resistant, fire resistant, and antimicrobial, which is obviously very important. Can you go into depth on each functionality and how that's accomplished? Yeah, so in terms of chemical and fire resistant, um, we had um, a blend in the fabric that is fire retardant, meaning that you know, when it's self um, caught on fire, it will self extinguish. So like it won't actually continue to burn. It would just stop burning. In terms of the chemical resistance, it's a treatment on top of that fire retardant fabric that would basically, you know, it's kind of like acting as a shield that protects you against things like, um, you know, like polar solvent, like acid, things like that. Um, so like it actually would interact with you it won't get seeped and get through your skin. Um, so that's how it protects it. From the antimicrobial perspective, because a lot of our fabrics are um, water resistant and it didn't absorb a lot of water, bacteria can't grow on it. So that's how you know those three features kind of come together. I think what's special about us is we actually go into a little bit farther than that. 
meaning that we source things that are comfortable to wear. You know, like we don't just choose things just because they have those three properties, but it also have to feel good wearing it. It also has to kind of shape with woman curves, meaning that it has to have a little bit of flexibility. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, like we source everything in the U.S. Absolutely. So when it comes to making sure that all the products are super protective, but also comfortable to wear and flattering to the figure, how do you find that balance and make sure um, that it can kind of encompass all of those things? The short answer to this is it takes us longer and take more effort to find such things. Um, we would have a lot of fabric that we will get sample from our manufacturer um, and you know, only one or two of them will actually work. So from that perspective, I rely on a lot of um, fashion designer, um, where, rather that freelancer and also my colleague counterpart, Victoria White, who actually a fashion designer for um, Avon Outfitters and many other big brands before coming into this, um, that this is all we can work with. Like how could we engineer and create the products that people would actually like to wear? So the, the short questions is harder. Um, it takes more effort. We have less option. But now that we become, you know, more stronger brand, we actually have some partnership in line that actually we could, we could create our own fabric to fit Absolutely. exactly what we need. That's incredible. So in the future, um, where do you see the new type of fabric or creating your own fabric going towards what direction? Again, um, I think there's a huge gap in terms of um, personal protective equipment that actually um, comfortable to wear. Um, a lot of things are still really static, especially the chemical and fire resistant kind. They are hard, you know, they are not comfortable to wear and that's one of the reasons why people don't wear them. Um, so we learn by working the space that comfortability, like comfortability and aesthetic of things is actually what driven people to wear it. Um, so like that's one of the gap that we're trying to address with our brand, with other partners. That's really interesting. So when it comes to um, considering the aesthetic of the piece of clothing and the design of it, is there a certain um, equipment or gear product that you guys have that has drawn the most market demand? Currently in this environment is a fire resistant face mask because it's the first time people have to use this in a, in a bigger quantity. Um, but some of the product that are, should be mentioned that are our best seller or it could be only found on our website or our store is fire resistant hijab. Uh, we create the first fire resistant hijab for, you know, Muslim women scientists. That type of product never exists in the market before. Um, in addition to that, um, one of our best seller is a fire resistant dress. Um, another item is that you can't find anywhere else. Um, although it's not, you know, completely covered, um, you could supplement it with like a leggings or something under. And women really like uh, the flexibility of having a dress on and just taking that legging off and put the shoes on to go keep presentation. Absolutely. And that seems like a really interesting product. So when it comes to considering more of the gender gap in STEM, um, it's very obvious how little consideration is given to women in the STEM fields, especially chemistry, like you were saying, and for your company to be the first people to create a fire resistant hijab in 2020, it kind of shows a lot about the um, gender gap. So can you tell us a little bit more about the gender gap in chemistry or science as a coming from you? Yes, absolutely. Um, so many studies have found that um, women at a younger age don't associate ourselves, like girl at a younger age don't associate themselves that they being good at math. And because math is such, you know, like um, a grounding point for a lot of STEM education, as you kind of go through, you know, the life of how, how that girls is growing up um, older, then less and less women become more attractive to STEM field or don't think that they're good enough to be in the STEM field, then they kind of drop out that I think only 20% of the industry um, actually a woman, even though, you know, like in grad school, 50% are actually women, you know, so like as you kind of go through different stages, less and less women are staying the field and become, you know, the leadership at the top. So I think it's really important for us to have a role model or even 
type of products of people um, that show that they are, you know, like a striving in STEM and thriving in STEM and they, they are feminine, they don't look like men uh, and they, they just representing themselves. Um, and that, yeah. So that's why it's really important for us that we create the product for women. We feature all real women scientists and that's what our brand is um, doing um, extensively. For sure. And that's really empowering, especially since I think it comes down to, like you said, at a very young age, there's just not enough representation of females um, having femininity, but also working in the STEM field shouldn't kind of be a contrast or juxtaposition. So I think kind of pioneering the way and just showing young girls and young women that want to go into STEM that they have options, um, that they're being considered even, it definitely goes a long way. So I think that's really important. Um, so how does Amersui as a company plan to address the gender gap in STEM besides um, representation? You talked a little bit about using real woman scientists in your company. Yeah, so I think a lot of role model is to, you know, spread out our brand awareness and um, the missions around telling more story about women in STEM that are successful like how did they get into the role um, and show them um, looking the way that they want to, which is being feminine in clothing that made for women. Uh, one thing that I'd like to add is in, you know, like one of the barriers of women working as they get into professional fields is that there are also not, not enough products for them. You know, only 29% of women who are working in many variety of fields, this is anything from like defense, engineering, nuclear, you know, like energy, that only 29% of PPE is made for them. So it's actually hamper their work because it either not fit well or they don't feel like they belong in the field. Um, so the more we couldn't provide products, feature them in products that are comfortable, made for them, and then tell their story, um, their success and their accomplishment as a real life woman scientist. Um, that's really important to us. All of our products also feature, um, you know, like women in STEM and healthcare who has been successful in the past, like Marie Curie or Rosa and Franken, to show that there has been women in the history that have done great things um, and there's women in the current now that done great things and you could do the same. Absolutely. And I know coming from you being a chemist and then transitioning over to being an entrepreneur of your own company, um, that's definitely very important. And do you see in the future the company kind of going more into depth with the story part of the scientists kind of featuring um, different women scientists on, um, I'm not sure, like a daily or weekly basis, kind of having a story behind each piece of clothing. Do you see yourselves kind of going that direction? We, we as a brand would continue that effort. Uh, we think it's important, it's, it's on brand for us and it's something that really positive that we really strongly feel good about. Um, so that would probably be one thing. But now that we have grown a little bit from two years, uh, three years ago in 2018, since we started the business, um, you know, like we actually working on more effort to be more inclusive overall and not just with just women, um, but with people with diff different sizes and the availability of the product. So we are kicking off the campaign and next year really focus on hidden figures in all in all type of uh, field, so this including the front line, the healthcare um, space, and also in STEM. Um, so basically, we are spreading that mission into a broader variety, focusing on people uh, that come from different diversity um, of background. Absolutely, um, that sounds like a huge endeavor. Um, so that's amazing for you guys um, going into so many other different branches of work and trying to provide for these different people and make them feel seen. That's definitely a huge mission to take on as one company. But um, this year with the COVID pandemic and everything, how has that affected your business, um, accelerated your business, or what trends have you seen in terms of that? So COVID has accelerated our business. It has not been easy because 
um, at the time that COVID started, we focused mainly on um, laboratory protection. And because a lot of our university clients had shut down or have lower capacity, you know, at, at the time, you know, the market fit was not there in terms yeah. of being in one space. Um, and that's one of the reason why, you know, we had, in terms of we had expertise and knowledge in textile, um, engineering and technology, we understand how to make clothing that comfortable and fit well. Um, so my team and I really look into the market and really see what else could we address and could be helpful and create a great impact. And one of the really, you know, like if you go on the news and a lot of people would probably know one of the most important things during COVID is a PPE shortage, personal protective equipment shortage um, in healthcare, and then also the sustainability around it. Uh, basically, there's not enough disposable um, medical PPE to go around for hospital and people in the healthcare and the front line. And because we're using a lot of disposable during COVID, there's a lot of waste associated with it, especially mm -hmm. plastic. Right. Um, yeah. Just to give you a little bit number of two million tons of plastic um, from healthcare going into the landfill every day, uh, probably right now, too, since we got like the second or third curve of COVID. Yeah, and 90 percent of it would actually stay there. It won't get processed because it just can't. Um, so what we have come up with is we take what we learn, creating the medical gowns that could be washed up to 100 times. Uh, durable, comfortable, size inclusive. Um, and in addition to that, we create a mobile app that will be able to track the washing of the gowns, um, how much people are washing, like going through washing, how many times this get used. Um, and then also create like environmental impact that associate with each time that they use washable gown, uh, how much they save in terms of disposable products. That's really interesting. And um, so when it comes to PPE more in terms of COVID, have you guys considered um, kind of pivoting your mission a little bit in terms of the brand and kind of branching out a little bit or more about tracking the sustainability of existing products? We are branching it out, as you said. Um, uh, for one, we expanded it to healthcare um, because this is where we could make the most impact at this time. Um, secondly, focus on sustainability. We always provided washable, reusable products that are durable and made of um, uh, eco-friendly um, fabric, but we just never brand it as such. So now we focus more on the sustainability side, um, size inclusiveness, and then also, you know, availability of product um, into the healthcare industry as well. Yeah, and those are definitely very kind of subtle shifts, but um, resonate a lot with people today. So thank you so much for sharing, Bo. Today I've been joined by Bo Wang Chackledy, who is a PhD chemist and the founder of Amor Sui. Thank you for being here with me today. Thank you.